取るために。武器大好き。<笑>武器最高。なった最高。In Japan, almost no one has guns, even gangsters. So these guys rely on their fists and other implements. これがこれがブラジルさんなんです。でこれがアメアメリカの USA の。It was a crime that shocked Japan. A robbery in broad daylight in one of Tokyo's glitziest shopping districts. Masked men smashed display cases in a Ginza watch store, then grabbed at least 100 Rolexes worth about 700,000 US dollars before fleeing the scene. Police say the robbery had the hallmarks of a growing concern in Japan Yami Baito, or dark part time jobs. The Yakuza, Japan's infamous gangster groups, are shrinking. For 19 years in a row, their numbers have dropped, going from 26,000 members in 2023 to 24,000 in 2024. Most Yakuza members are getting older, kind of like Japan's population. They're having trouble finding young people to join. Imagine old dudes still trying to hold on to their outdated criminal ways, watching their power and money disappear. But crime doesn't just disappear, it transforms. Recently, younger, more tech savvy gangsters. Gangs called Takuryu are emerging in Japan. They're sneakier and, in some ways, even more successful than the aging Yakuza. These new gangs are getting a lot of attention from the media and police. So, what's up with these Takuryu gangs? How do they commit their crimes? What makes them different from the Yakuza? Could they someday replace the Yakuza? Or is this all just hype? In Nasu, Tochigi Prefecture, about 150 kilometers northeast of Tokyo, a resident found two burned bodies near a river on April 16th, 2024. They were identified as Takajima. And Sachiko, a couple who owned popular restaurants in Tokyo, in Ueno City to be exact. But where is this connected to the Kokuryu gangs? The Tokyo police arrested six suspects linked to this murder case. One of the arrested was Sakin, the mastermind behind the attack. Apparently, Sakin was the husband of the couple's daughter and managed the family business. The beef was over how the business should be run, leading to Sakin plotting the murder. What's wild is that the other five suspects had no personal connection to the victims or even to each other. They didn't even know each other's names. Names. This random group is an example of Yami Bayito, shady part time jobs, which target troubled young people ready for quick, illegal money. Wakayama Kirato, one of the young men who strangled the couple, was a promising child actor once. He got roles in TV shows like the 2014 live action of Studio Ghibli's Kiki's Delivery Service. Despite his promising start, he fell into deep financial trouble and ended up accepting Sakin's offer to kill for 1 million yen, about $6,000. This murder isn't an isolated. Case. This recruitment method is the bread and butter of Tokuryu gangs, which are now Japan's new criminal threat. Tokuryu gangs are different because they use modern tech to their advantage. They're not operating on the streets, they're all over the internet. These masterminds recruit people for shady jobs through social media and messaging apps. They do anything from scams and drug trafficking to murder. These jobs are split into tasks done by different people who usually don't know each other's names. They meet for the first time when committing the crime and then split up. Making it super hard to track them. These participants are disposable tools for a hidden mastermind. Tokuryu aren't just about flashy heists, they've got some crazy cyber tricks up their sleeves. They run all sorts of scams online. For example, they might pretend to be someone's grandson, calling old folks and claiming to be in trouble, needing quick cash. These It's Me scams have tricked a ton of people out of their savings. Another big scam involves pretending to be from well known companies, sending phishing emails to steal personal info and drain bank accounts. The internet Makes it easy for these gangs to reach tons of potential victims without being traced. In recent years, online scams have cost Japanese citizens millions of dollars. The Takuryu aren't only about small time scams, they've pulled off some big heists too. In May 2023, Tokyo's fancy Ginza shopping district witnessed a heist straight out of a GTA mission. At around 6 15 p.m., three young men stormed into the Quark Ginza Triple Eight store, threatened the staff with a knife, and smashed the showcases. They stole around one 100 luxury watches worth over $700,000 and escaped in a rental getaway car. The police caught the robbers within half an hour. But here's where it gets interesting. The thieves were all teenagers, age 16 to 19. Just like in other Tokuryu crimes, they didn't know each other. They met for the first time during the heist. The Ginza watch store heist was big news, but it wasn't the only Tokuryu style robbery. Between March and May 2023, there were five similar robberies in Tokyo alone. Since 2021, there 
there have been over 50 Tokuryu-related robberies across 14 different prefectures. Tokuryu masterminds don't just stop at robberies, they exploit their recruits in many ways. In 2021, they ran scams that tricked elderly Japanese people into handing over their ATM cards. The scammers impersonated financial officers and drained the victims' accounts. When phone scammers started getting long prison sentences in Japan, Takuru groups shifted to more violent crimes. In one case, the Tokuryu crew pretended to be a telemarketing company, calling people to conduct a fake survey. They used the survey to identify potential wealthy targets and then sent in their recruits to rob them. Things got violent fast. In December 2022, robbers beat and severely injured a Tokyo resident, dealing 30 million yen from his home. Just a month later, another group killed a 90-year-old woman woman during a home invasion, stealing 600,000 yen in cash and jewelry. A lot of these crimes were directed by a massive Tokuryu syndicate run by Watanabe Yuki, also known as Luffy, not to be confused with the anime character. This guy ran his operation from jail in Manila, Philippines. Arrested in the Philippines, Luffy found a way to keep his operation running by exploiting local legal loopholes. Luffy's crew scammed and robbed Japanese citizens for years, even pretending to be financial officers to scam elderly folks. When they faced longer jail terms, they pivoted to more violent crimes, using the internet to recruit young, desperate people willing to take big risks for big payouts. In February 2023, Luffy and his main crew's fake cases were finally dismissed, and they were deported to Japan. But the Tokuryu problem didn't end there. The character of Luffy inspired copycat criminals, and similar crimes continued even after Watanabe's arrest. One thing that stands out about Tokuryu is their lack of traditional structure. Unlike the Yakuza, where there's a clear hierarchy, Tokuryu operate more like a decentralized network. This makes them hard to pin down. They recruit through social media, like Instagram, Facebook, and even TikTok. Recruiters post vague ads promoting high-paying jobs that seem too good to be true. Once interested, recruits are moved to encrypted apps like Telegram or Signal, where details are hashed out. Recruits often provide personal information up front, which the masterminds use to intimidate, blackmail, and keep them in line. Ever heard of burner phones? Tokuryu uses those too for added secrecy. A 20-year-old girl caught in a Takuryu scam told police, I knew it was shady, but I already gave them my photo ID and a video of my parents' home, so I felt trapped. Another crazy Tokuryu crime happened in Osaka in 2022. Hackers infiltrated a major cryptocurrency exchange, siphoning off millions in digital currency. This wasn't just a local operation. It had people involved from all around the world, like a hacker collab. When the exchange tried to trace the stolen funds, they found the money had hopped through dozens of crypto wallets, making it nearly impossible to recover. Tokuryu gangs are getting savvy with tech, using everything from basic phishing to sophisticated hacking. Most people who fall into Tokuryu activities are desperate for money. Japan's economy has been in a slump and poverty is rising. Younger folks struggling to find stable jobs see these shady part-time gigs as a quick fix. High school dropouts, university students burdened with debt, and even young professionals burned out by the rat race can easily be swayed by the promise of fast cash. A heartbreaking story is that of Kenji, a 22-year-old university dropout. Buried in student loans with no job in sight, he saw an online ad promising high pay for easy work. He ended up being a money mule, transferring large sums of cash between banks as part of a bigger laundering scheme. When the police caught him, he broke down, saying, I just needed the money. I didn't know it would come to this. Tokuryu groups aren't just confined to Japan. They've gone global. They collaborate with other international crime networks, enabling them to pull off grander schemes. From trafficking drugs sourced from South America to laundering stolen money through European banks, their reach is worldwide. This international aspect makes them much harder to tackle, as it involves multiple jurisdictions and law enforcement agencies. The Tokuryu issue is definitely something to worry about. They've proved that they can adapt and grow, using new technologies to recruit and carry out crimes. Whether they'll completely replace the Yakuza or not is still up for debate, but they've surely made a mark. The Yakuza themselves might even adopt to Tokuryu methods, blending the old school and new school ways of committing crimes, which could create an even bigger problem for the police. What do you think? Are Tokuryu gangs a serious threat? How do you see them evolving in the future? Will they end the Yakuza's dominance, or will both groups find a way to merge and become even more formidable? Thank you for watching, and please do subscribe to the channel for more of these deep-researched videos. See you on the next one.